you know, with as many chapels as we have, usually our kindergartners don't get a turn until May. They've been getting turns all year doing this and that. This might be their first time for their class. So it's a big job for a kindergartner this early in the year. Well done, kindergartners. Now, if you have your Bible with you, I know some of you, I saw them as you came in. Open them up and show me that you're ready. We'll read together. I can tell that Naya's ready. She looked up here quickly. Good job, Jackson. We'll read the reference, and then we'll read the passage together. One, two, ready, read. Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Close your Bible. Under your chair beside you, you decide how you can do it. And let's talk about that for a second when we think about gratefulness, when we tell others that we are grateful for them and for what they bring to our lives and how the Lord's using them in our lives. We're showing them, you know what? You are important. I hold you in high regard. And when we stop what we are doing to make sure we are on time, we remember that we are thinking of other people because we don't want them to have to wait for us. We're showing them you are more important than what I have going on right now. I'm going to hold you in high regard. And that's what you do when you're punctual. Pastor Clark's going to talk to you more about that. Right now we're going to put our scripture verse for the year, our theme verse, because our high schoolers are going to lead us in a song about loving lavishly. It's one that you know from music class, and we sing it in chapel. Let's read that together. One, two, ready, read. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. 1 John 3, 1. Will you pray with me and then we'll let our high schoolers lead us in worship. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. Lord, you've made a way for us to be able to stay in school this whole school year, Father, and we are thankful for that and we're grateful to you for that. Father, we do pray for our friends that are not here with us today. Maybe they're on a trip, and we pray that they would get back safely and be ready to come back to school. And, Father, they may be not with us because they are sick or someone in their family is sick. We pray you would be with them, that you would heal them, and that you would bring them back to school. Lord, thank you that we get to gather today and worship you together. Thank you for our high schoolers who have come to lead us, Father. We pray that we don't just sing words but that these words that we do sing would be the attitudes of our heart, Lord, and we want to worship you today. Father, thank you for Pastor Clark and the way he follows you and leads Grace Community Church and Grace Community School in that same way, Lord, that we're following him. He's following you, Lord. Thank you for his time today, and thank you that he's going to bring words straight from you to us today. Father, prepare our hearts to hear the words that you've given him to speak to us. Lord, I thank you that we get to celebrate your work in boys and girls' lives today. I pray it's an encouragement to the moms and dads that are here. Father, thank you for moms and dads who entrust their children to us during the day. Lord, thank you for teachers who pour into kiddos. Lord, we pray that this chapel time is a blessing, Lord, not only to us, that that we would be a blessing to you, Lord, that this would be a sweet sacrifice to you. Father, we love you, and we commit our chapel time to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Help me welcome our high school praise band. Hi, we are so glad to be here to worship with you. My name is Hannah Grace, and I'm in 12th grade. This is Daniel on the keyboards. He is in 10th grade. And then this is Henry. He's in 11th grade. And this is Michaela. She's in 12th grade. And then Meg, who's in 10th grade. And then Lauren, who's also in 10th grade. So let's stay in worship. All right. We are so grateful to be here. And um, uh, uh, so let's just start this new year right, 2021. You know, hopefully it's better than the last one. And just praise God together.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, bending every heart. I worship you, yeah. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. make miracle work. reasons you guys may be seated a couple of reasons why we want these kiddos to be here one you just heard heard it isn't it amazing to be led in worship by such talented and godly young men and women so grateful for them another thing boys and girls we want you to get a glimpse of what it might be like one day for you at grace high school Moms and dads, we want you to get a glimpse of what it might be like one day for your child when they are at Grace High School. And we flat out like to see you again. I had a little quiz this morning, and I got most everybody right. You know, kids change a lot from the time they leave the elementary till they're in high school. And they get older, and also Mrs. Dozier gets older, right? So I do always ask the question, and let's see what they have to say. How many of you went to Grace Elementary School and you sat out here at some point? So that's most of them, right? And another question, and this is going to be hard for Reagan. Reagan, you're just going to have to raise your hand really, really high because we did say stand up. So if you have a brother or sister up here, I know Reagan, am I missing anybody else? Reagan, raise your hand really, really, really. And who else do I have? She st- oh, she stood up. There we go. She stood up. And go ahead and claim her. Big sister Michaela's going to claim her. That's right. That's her little sister out there. So we're so glad. And, you know, moms and dads, we have a couple I see high school, too, that are here. 
it feels like about that long ago, doesn't it, that they were sitting out here. Yes, thank you so much. Thank y'all for coming. We appreciate you today. Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to welcome Pastor Clark. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for the worship high schoolers. That was awesome. And uh, for, if you got a new bike, I'm glad to hear about that bike. And I hope uh, it's a cool color. What, on my bike, as Mrs. Dozier says, I like to ride a bike a lot. My bike is orange. What are your, what's your bike color? One, two, three. Yeah. That's, that's uh, I heard black, I heard green, I heard red, I heard orange, I heard pink. That's a good color, that pink. I like pink as a bike color. Because if you have a bike and it's pink, you better ride it fast. That's what I say. That's good. Well, and I better pick that up. All right. Well, good to be here this morning. Glad you guys are uh, awake and alert. How'd that work? What happened? I wish I was. It broke it. Yeah, I did. I broke it. It's got to be higher. One of these days, I'm going to figure this out. All right. Good to be with you guys this morning. I love those character qualities. Starts off with gratefulness, right? Gratefulness, the idea that we ought to let others know by our words and by our actions how much we appreciate them. And then punctuality. It's the showing esteem for others, showing that we care about somebody else by being on time so they don't have to wait. I, I just, I really like that. I think the one thing about both of those qualities is they both relate to God. Because if if we're going to be grateful for other people, first we have to be grateful for God. It begins, gratefulness begins by telling God, by our words and by our actions, how much we appreciate him. And, it, and that looks a little bit like worship. It looks a little bit like thanksgiving. It looks a little like praising him. But ultimately it's saying, God, we're just, we're just, I just really appreciate who you are as God. And I don't care whether you're five, six, seven, or 40 years old or 50 years old, you still have to be appreciative to God. Vicki and I, my wife and I, have two kids, as Mrs. Dozier said. One is Micah. He's a, a captain in the Army, and he and his wife Mary live in North Carolina. And my, our daughter Chelsea is a nurse over in Dallas. She's a, a labor and delivery nurse, which means that she helps moms bring their babies into the world. It's a really cool job, sometimes stressful, but it's good. And they, they both like it. And, and I'm really grateful to God for their lives. I'm grateful that they got to be in a place just like you are and hear the word of God and have people pour into them about who God is and how their lives need to change because of that. And now as adults, they're living out their faith in Jesus. It's a great thing. And I'm grateful to God. I appreciate what God's done. You know, as I look, too, at uh, punctuality, it's a, it's a little bit like that. It's a combination of, you know, us being connected to each other and being, being appreciative of others and being uh, esteeming other people. But it's also about related to God in terms of being in the right place at the right time. In, uh, in our church at Grace Community uh, on Sundays, we are going through the book of Jonah, do you guys know anything about the book of Jonah? What, what's one thing you know about Jonah? Yes, back there in the sweater, right there. Yes, yep, that's you. Mm -hmm. he, Jonah was what? Oh, okay. He was sent to a city that was bad. Good, yeah. What else do we know about Jonah? Yeah. Yeah, he was swallowed by a big fish. That's really great. And that's, uh, I mean, that's really great for Jonah at the time, right? Because he needed it. Because he'd either be swallowed by the fish or he'd be in the ocean. But, uh, okay, that's good. We're going we're gonna to move on. But um, one cool thing as you look at the book of Jonah is that you, you see some things about who Jonah was. And I want to just t tell us or talk about two things because I think it's important for us to understand not just the story, but God, what God was trying to do with it. The story of Jonah is just that, that God comes to Jonah and he tells him something. He says, I want you to go to this city, this evil city by the name of Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to do that. Jonah didn't care about that city. Jonah didn't want to be engaged in that city. And so Jonah went in the exact opposite direction. He went down to the ocean and he bought a 
ticket for a boat that was going completely to the opposite end of the universe, Tarshish, and, uh, and he got on that boat. And God was trying to get his attention and move him back in the right direction. So what he did was he sent this big storm. I mean, have you ever been in a storm? Maybe, maybe not on a boat, but, uh, but maybe you've, been, you've probably been one in one, maybe in a car or in your home, or maybe even outside, and the, and the winds start to come up and the rain starts to go. Now, when you're on a boat, that's even more dangerous. And so these sailors were terrified. They, they, were, they were crying out to their gods, who weren't really gods, by the way. They were just made-up gods. They weren't worshiping the God of the Bible, the God of the universe. And so they were crying out to gods that couldn't help them. But they were also throwing out stuff from the boat to lighten the load of the boat so that the boat can be controlled a little bit better, right? And then, and then as they were doing all that stuff, Jonah was doing something kind of weird. Something that probably none of us would have been doing. Jonah was laying in the bottom of the boat fast asleep. And it wasn't just because he was tired. Jonah was, was there because he had kind of just gotten rid of all the stuff that God wanted him to do, had put it out of his mind and was just completely asleep in the bottom of the boat. There are two things that I want us to learn today from that. Number one, God spoke to Jonah and Jonah disobeyed. And for us, God speaks to us, maybe not in the same way that he was speaking to Jonah. My guess is that, uh, that none of us will hear uh, uh, the voice of God tell us to do something today. My guess is that you won't be sitting at your desk today and all of a sudden you'll hear, Mary, I want you to love the one person sitting next to you. Ah, you're not, you probably, I mean, God could do that, right? We know that. God could do whatever he wants. God could do that. But primarily, God doesn't speak through an audible voice today. Primarily, God speaks to us through his Bible, right? Through his word. And you may think that Jonah was so bad because Jonah heard this voice from God and then he went completely in the opposite direction. But you know that God is telling us to do things all the time. God, every time you hear the word of God, every time you read the word of God, it's God telling you to obey him. It's God telling you to respond to him in the appropriate way. And so when, God, when, the, when the Bible says, love your neighbor, or when the Bible says, speak the truth, or when the Bible says, uh, don't speak first, but listen, when the Bible says, share or be generous, and we don't do those things, we're just like Jonah. We're just like Jonah. We, we hear the word of God, but we don't obey the word of God. And so as, you know, again, whether we're five, six, or 40, 50 years old, we're called to the same thing, to obey the word of the Lord. Now, the next thing that's interesting about the Jonah story was that whole idea that he was asleep. I mean, he's fast asleep in the middle of this storm. And you know what that shows me is that Jonah really didn't care that much that he had disobeyed God. You know, when, when I disobey God and, um, and I'm dealing with the consequences of that disobedience, you know, when I'm trying to wrestle with, with maybe avoiding it or looking to, to try to, you know, kind of gloss it over or whatever, the Lord, through his Holy Spirit, does something in me. He just keeps working at me. He keeps, he keeps making me have to consider what I've done and who I've hurt and all that. And I'll tell you, when I'm in that situation, I very rarely can sleep very well. But Jonah slept fine because his disobedience did not produce any repentance. His disobedience didn't produce any sorrow whatsoever. So the second lesson that we learn is that when we, when we disobey God, our, our response ought to be one of sorrow that we've sinned against him. Now, if we, if we have trusted Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins, we know that that sin is completely forgiven. But we still want to acknowledge before, to God that we have sinned against him and that we were sorry for that and thankful that he's forgiven us, and that, that then asking God to, to help us change the way that we're living. So, two lessons from the book of Jonah, right? 
The first is, is that when God speaks, we ought to obey. And God is speaking to us all the time through his word. And the second thing is, when we don't obey, and we won't all the time. If anybody tells you you should obey, I mean, well, you should try to obey all the time, right? But, but because of who we are and the sin that's in us, we still are going to do things that are wrong. And when we do those things that are against God, we ought to confess them. We ought to believe that Jesus Christ forgives them. And we ought to ask the Holy Spirit to help us change so that we don't live that way anymore. Let's pray together. God, thanks for your love for us, for your grace in our life, for how you move in your, through your Holy Spirit to help us understand that you have forgiven us through your son, Jesus. And I pray that you would help us to live there. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Clark. Okay, what we do every time, I ask you one question. Did you get the message from God that he was giving you today? Okay, so Pastor Clark told you about two things. He said the first thing, God is going to speak to, yeah, you and me. He's going to. He spoke to Jonah. He will speak to you. The second thing he said was, when he speaks, we need to obey. But if we don't, what do you do? It's disobedience. What do you do when you're there? You ask for forgiveness and trust that he will forgive you. And then you quickly get in the right place and do the right thing. That's what you do. He's going to talk to you. If you disobey, quickly ask for forgiveness and get in the right place at being, being at the right time, which has a lot to do with our character qualities today. So what we're going to do at this point is pass out our character qualities for two character qualities that your teachers have seen in many of you. Does that mean that the rest of you weren't doing these things? No. But what it does mean is that your teacher has seen you do it specifically. The first one is gratefulness. That basically means being thankful to others. Pastor Clark also said that thankfulness starts where? Did you hear him? It was at the very, very beginning. We start with thankfulness to, Claire, is that you? Go ahead. To God. Because he loves us and he loved us first, even when we weren't lovable. So we're going to pass out that character quality first. The second one is going to be for punctuality. When you're in the right place at the right time and you are being cautious of the needs and time of others. So we're going to do that. Now, as we do that, we're going to do the same thing we've done this year. Okay, we'll start with awards from Mrs. Oringer's class. The Gratefulness Award goes to Towns Rutherford and the Punctuality Award to Thomas Vasnick. Would you guys come up? Yes, give them a round of applause. From Mrs. Schultz's kindergarten class, the Gratefulness Award goes to William Bowers and the Punctuality Award to Micah Morrison. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you. If you'll come up way over here, that gives Mom and Dad time to get a really great picture and time to say, thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in my kid's life. So you watch me. it a long walk for mom and dad. Got it? Got it? All right. First grade, Miss Ben Scoder's class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Grant Weiner and Harley Martinez and the Punctuality Award to Walker Linville. From Mrs. Felton's first grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Scott Sepulveda and the Punctuality Award to Eli Jens and Tegan Warbach. All the way over there, guys, so you get a nice long walk. Thank you. 
And from Mrs. Morgan's first grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Bethany Sims and Wyatt Minor. And the Punctuality Award goes to Evelyn Henderson. Excellent job, kindergartners and first graders. Now we'll move to our fourth graders from Mrs. Berry's class. The Gratefulness Award goes to George Admire and Natalie Fox. And the Punctuality Award goes to James Hamilton. And from Mrs. Barton's fourth grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Zoe Coates. And the Punctuality Award to Brandon Coker. From Mrs. Craver's fourth grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Zadie Fenton and to Ethan Foreman and to the Punctuality Award to Sophie Vedreen and Luke Burks. Zadie, <laughs> Zadie, we got two for you, babe. One says Zadie Bell and one says Zadie, so you get to pick which one you want to take, okay? Okay, she wanted Zadie Bell, so I'm going to say that name again, Zadie Bell Fenton. <laughs> Let's give our fourth graders a round of applause. Okay, we'll start with Mrs. Harden's kindergarten class. The Gratefulness Award goes to Ethan Lawson and the Punctuality Award to Jana Brabon and Liam Hawkins. Come up over here, guys, and walk all the way across. Yep, walk all the way across. Remember, you're stopping with Mrs. Provines. From Mrs. Schultz, kindergarten class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Camden Braswell and Noah Heron and the Punctuality Award to Landon Griffin. I'll save Landon's for him. From Mrs. Holmes' second grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Teddy Island and Aiden Glover, and the Punctuality Award to Rowan Sadler and Clayton Walsh. Let's give all these friends a round of applause so far. From Mrs. Shield's second grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Reagan Camp and the Punctuality Award to Micah Stockhammer. Give them applause. Yep, you're right. And from Mrs. Snyder's second grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Jackson Bonneville and Kinsey Elam and the Punctuality Award to Landry Walsh. When you hear it in a family, you know that that's working, Mom and Dad. Thank you. From Mrs. Gaddis's third grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Zane Armstrong and Avril Graham, and the Punctuality Award to Carson Henry. From Mrs. Gillen's fourth grade class, I'm sorry, Mrs. Gillen's third grade class, I moved y'all quickly. Her third grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Livy Fleet and the Punctuality Award to Kyler Switzer and Peter Ahn. From Mrs. McClenney's third grade class, the Gratefulness Award goes to Anne Marie Mayfield and Luke Sepulveda and the Punctuality Award to Isaac Wilson. You know, with us having two different chapels, you guys don't get to always hear about brothers and sisters who got the same award, but I just heard another family name there. Good job, moms and dads, who are incorporating and encouraging those character qualities in your family. Well done. Thank you. Let's give all these friends a round of applause. Thank y'all so much. Thanks, mom and moms and dads, for being with us today. We always are looking for ways to say yes, even in the middle of this time, for you guys to be here with us. So thank you for being here. Boys and girls, you are dismissed, and we'll be here for pictures if anybody wants to have some pictures. Thank y'all so much. <laughs>